Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Back in 2004, during the height of the D20 market glut, a little company arrived on the scene called Privateer Press. Originally released for the D20 system as a campaign sourcebook for 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons, the setting came into its own as the backdrop for a wildly successful miniatures war game called War Machine. As War Machine became more and more popular, however, the RPG line was allowed to hibernate in relative obscurity until 2012, when the company decided to take the plunge and release a new edition. Now an independent game line with its own proprietary engine, it's ready for a thorough evaluation. And that's where we come in. This, dear viewers, is the Iron Kingdom's Full Metal Fantasy RPG. Okay, heroes, what kind of characters did we come up with? I'll go first. I'm a Leilis human gun mage warcaster from the Order of the Amethyst Rose. My regiment was decimated by Kadoran troops during the occupation, and so these days I'm a sellsword. Someday I want to join up with the Resistance and free my homeland, but for now, I'm saving up a war chest. I am an Iosan Knight Warcaster. I'm a renegade of sorts, a former member of Vyre's army that fled the chaos following the War of Houses. Now I'm adrift in the human kingdoms, doing mercenary work to pay the bills until I can figure out what else to do. What did you make? Um, I'm a Rulic Dwarf from a minor merchant clan. I'm a gifted military officer, Warcaster. Uh, hold on. D am I to understand that you all made Warcasters? Well, yeah, this is Iron Kingdoms. Why would we make anything else? I, I don't know. For the sake of variety? For the sake of not pissing me off, maybe? Oh, well, right. Let's play Star Wars and I'll be Fringers. Yeah, well, okay, now nobody gets to be a Warcaster. Reroll. But... No. Reroll. Okay, fine. Crybaby. Well, except for the NPC that I'm running, that is. So, introduce me to the characters you'll actually be playing today. I'm a Stormblade Knight from the Army of Signar. My name is Sir Daniel de Leon, the Flower of House Leon. I'm a Gabra Thief Cutthroat. I specialize in shadowy doings and knife work. Where I come from is none of your business. Sounds good. What's your name? Billy Bo Bob McStabbit. Of course it is. All right, your turn. Ahoy, screen monkey! I be a pirate duelist from the choppy drink of the Broken Coast. I keep me secrets close to me heart. So don't go thinking you can get me into a mogul room. Find out why I buried my treasure. Try it once and I'll see you kiss the gunner's daughter. Oh, well, this isn't your f***ing old. Yar! Landlubber, keep your capers and get me some backy for me, bye. Okay, it's official. It's gotten old. Can we get started, please? Everything's better. With pirates. Iron Kingdoms. How do I explain you? First, take a stereotypical fantasy world complete with elves, dwarves, and goblins. Then go ahead and ram it balls first through a Magitech Industrial Revolution. While you're at it, arm it to the teeth and plunge it into the midst of a steadily escalating world war fought with coal-fired, steam-powered, armor-plated war golems called Warjacks. Then, just for flavor, add in the apocalyptic machinations of a lineage of world-blighting dragons, all of whom want nothing more than to consume one another, and everything else. Garnish with a splash of political intrigue and warring faiths, and then serve with a warm glass of pure testosterone. Welcome to the Iron Kingdoms. I came into this game completely unfamiliar with its previous incarnations. And after reading about the worlds, the powers, the political struggles, I was extremely intrigued. The setting is rich and expansive, and I think that's where this game's power really lies. I'm giving it a chamber. If there's one thing I like about War Machine and the Iron Kingdoms, it's the setting. The setting is huge and heavily detailed, with a lot of thought put into every faction, the characters, the technology, and everything that makes it unique. I will give this section a roaring chamber and an unmitigated thumbs up. Privateer's world building skills are what won me five years ago, and to be honest, it's all that really makes me want to play the game today. I love the Iron Kingdoms as a setting. It's a vibrant, constantly evolving world with such an expertly balanced mixture of intrigue, gunplay, magic, and sheer manly balls that I can't imagine running out of stories to tell with this game. Its only limiting factor is that it does have a very strong and overarching meta plot, 
and one that evolves mostly in a different game line entirely. If you want to keep up with world events, you're probably going to have to follow War Machine 2. While that's something I do anyway, your mileage may vary. Overall, I'll give the setting a solid and resounding chamber. It looks bad for you here, people. The Thamorite cult leader's gotten away, and his vicious followers have you decidedly outnumbered. Imagine that. If only we were f***ing warcasters, we might actually stand a chance. Shut up. Okay, so, wait, do you prefer Billy or Bob? No, no, it's Billy Bo Bob McStevitt. All one word, spelled like it sounds. In gobberish, dialect it means shining jewel of our household. Okay, well that makes me feel better about this. The cultist swinging his axe at you has rolled boxcars for damage. Considering your armor, I'd say that puts you at roughly, what, boned on your life spiral? Yep, that makes me dead. Yar! I'll avenge ye! I'll be giving the dog that scuttled me gobber mate! A dead man's hand. That's cowboys, not pirates. You mean a black penny. Oh, there you are. I'll do that then. I'll give the nearest one an axe to the face education with my storm glaive. More close in to take their places, hoping to overwhelm you with sheer force of numbers. This is ridiculous. We're sucking fumes on vitality, and there's like seven more. Good news, actually. That wall my warcaster's been battering finally gives way, and he and his warjack charge into the fray. His quick action this turn is to lay down a hex blast spell killing three of the cultists. He raises his hand cannon and puts a bullet between a fourth one's eyes. All right, so that'd be making it my turn. Not yet. Actually, his warjack sweeps in and smashes another cultist with his mace. Okay, so after that, I... Wait, it spends a focus point to swing again, battering down another one. But I... While spending its other focus point to crush the last one's skull. I think that neatly wraps up the encounter. Why, you scurvy, lion lobbing, field scrubbing... You know what? this. Just... What? The Iron Kingdoms RPG is based on a proprietary engine, one far different from its D20 roots. It's also loosely based on the mechanics for War Machine. And by loosely based, we mean almost completely copied and pasted in every possible way. Essentially, the system is based on a roll of two or more six-sided dice versus a target number for task resolution, with a character's base or derived attribute as a modifier. It's a hard sort of system, with the tight combat rules and battle-centric focus you might expect from a war game. Thanks to the base and template attack carryovers, it doesn't work as well unless you use miniatures. It's a fast and smooth game engine with a lot of tactical options and power interactions. Thing is, it's absolutely brutal. Weapons and armor are balanced toward the realistic end of the spectrum, which means that characters are made of tissue paper and held together by hope, dreams, and happy thoughts. What we're trying to say is that it's easy to die in this system. In fact, it's quite possible for even a fairly advanced character to end up one-shotted by a lucky roll. Character creation is extremely restrictive. A character is built by selecting a race and then one of the four archetypes. Oh, and if you want to cast any kind of magic ever, you will take the gifted archetype. And since some races aren't allowed to take them, they can't use any kind of magic in any way. Each character then begins with two careers, the combination of which give you all of your starting skills, gear, and abilities. Even character advancement is hemmed in this way. It's a very rigid and controlled approach, but not so controlled as Dungeons and Dragons. As much as I love the setting and as arguably excellent as the system is, I'm still not quite sure how I feel about it. You see, it is a fine engine, and it has been since the first time I paid for it when it was still called War Machine. Character creation represents an older aesthetic in game design where characters begin with very, very few abilities. It's better than D&D, but it is a trend that I was glad to see go, and I'm a little sad to see it make a comeback. The engine is smooth, but it isn't new, and it doesn't feel like a role-playing game. It feels like a war game with RPG stuff shoved up its butt like a Christmas turkey. Non-combat skills and item creation feel like a strapped together afterthought and barely exist. I'm still going to give this thing a chamber for its system, because it is a really good war game engine. But as an RPG, it leaves characters a little too limited and non-combat is neglected to the point of near non-existence. Now, I'm a tiny bit biased here, because I'm also an aficionado of Privateer's war game properties. This means I was quite comfortable with the rules right out of the gate, and I balk less at the war gamey nature of the engine. I can see how it wouldn't suit everyone, however, since non-combat skills and systems feel a bit like an add-on, rather than an integral part of the engine itself. That said, the combat engine is smooth, precise, and works very well, with lots of tactical flexibility and interesting skill-ability combos. Character creation, well, 
it could have been handled a bit better if the developers had just been willing to loosen the laces on the straight jacket the system seems to be wearing. Again, there are optional rules for allowing greater customization, but the largely arbitrary setting-based restrictions on race, career, archetype combinations hurt the system more than they help. All in all, I'm going to give the system a chamber with reservations. It works quite well, but only on its own terms. I don't think I could sum it up better than Jay and Fox. Combat is fairly decent, although I think using wargame rules for distance feels extremely out of place. I know that seems like a petty complaint, but if I wanted to play a wargame, well, I'd be playing a wargame. Creation is limited, and the fact that choosing a third occupation at the appropriate level nets you absolutely nothing in return, it doesn't feel like a role-playing game to me. I don't want to break out a measuring tape every five seconds while I fight. Maybe that's just because I'm used to things being measured in five foot squares or hexes, but it still made it very difficult for me to adjust to. Looking at this from a beginner's standpoint, I'm sorry, I have to give the system a bullet. <laughs> Alright, so are you ready with your new character? Yes, I am. I'm the human aristocrat investigator. Figure I'll be the face and stay out of harm's way. Might make me last a little bit longer. Okay, so you've finished clearing out the Thamorite cult, apart from the leader, and you've returned to the court of Baron Angerson. Hmm, I don't really want to bring attention to myself. I'm kind of slumming with mercenaries, and I don't want word to get out. I got this. My lord, if you will, I shall represent what remains of the mercenaries you hired. We have successfully destroyed the wretched hive of scum and villainy, but their leader has escaped. We shall pursue forthwith. One of the Baron's viziers steps quickly behind him, and Angerson's face turns pale with shock. You made your last mistake seeking swords on us, Kerr, the advisor hisses as he lets the shocked lord's body fall, revealing his bloody knife. What? You'll not find the High Advocate. He has found you. All right, this is a surprise round, so he's going first, and... That'll be your defense. The Thamorite Advocate has struck you with dark fire. Seeing as you're wearing no armor... Why would I wear armor? We're in court. To guard against surprise dark fire attacks? Come on, this is Iron Kingdom. Stay on your toes. Anyway, you're dead again. I have the sneaking suspicion that you're not running this right. Why do I have this feeling that you're not running this right? Because you suck. Okay, so the next action is going to go to Dan and... Wait a minute. Dan did... Son of a... Your name is Dandelion? The flower of the army of Signar. <laughs> yeah, did you not catch that? The rest of us pretty much got it. <laughs> All right, you know what? That's probably a good place to stop for the night. Are you making a new character? Yeah, I'm thinking a trolkin man at arms, fell collar, because f you guys, I ain't dying again. The Privateer Press walks a difficult line. While the company appeared on the scene with the celebrated Witchfire trilogy, in recent years they've made their name with War Machine and its savage spin-off, Hordes. Thus, the Iron Kingdom's RPG isn't their flagship product by a long shot, and they obviously know where their money is made. Until just this month, in fact, support material was largely limited to a few pages in each issue of the company's magazine, No Quarter, and a few tidbits released on the Privateer Press website. As far as the actual supplements, it's a short list. There's a compilation of reprinted material from No Quarter called Urban Adventure. It's only this month that the line's gotten its first real meat and potato supplement. Kings, Nations, and Gods provides a wealth of material on the human kingdoms of Western Amoran. While the majority of the book is detailed fluff, it also includes new careers, equipment, and spells, along with their RPG write-ups for each kingdom's distinctive warjacks. Overall, the quality of the books is excellent, with both the core book and this new supplement being deluxe full-color hardcover editions. They do bring in at 60 bucks a pop, though. The books are, however, well-made and gorgeous. The artwork is for the most part excellent and maintains a unique style. They're well-made and durable. That is, however, where the compliments end. To date, they have two real books and no real prospect for anything in the near future. They release things for free on the website, which I love, and in no quarter, which I hate. You see, I don't play War Machine anymore, so 90% of that magazine is a waste for me. For an IK player, it's paying $8 for maybe five pages of material. The port gets a bullet because Privateer clearly does not care about this game and their lack of concern and effort is apparent. The game's support makes it feel less like a product and more like a different bites of the same Apple marketing strategy. The production schedule for this game is punishingly sparse, with only about one major release a year. Privateer Press has a history of treating its RPG line like the proverbial red-headed stepchild. While they've been far more supportive and invested in this edition than in the previous one, I've been burned before. That said, I just can't quite bring myself to bullet this. 
I was able to pick up a copy of Kings, Nations, and Gods at Gen Con Indie this year, and it goes a long way to make the game feel more complete. The overall quality of the books is excellent, and I feel that the beautiful color artwork, the sheer volume of material, and the excellent website support are good enough to warrant that $60 price tag. I'm giving support a bare chamber, but again, with reservations. Privateer, I need to see some Horde support in the RPG, preferably before I hit retirement age. I remember when this game was released at Gen Con 2012. Privateer seems rather mum on releases for this line, though their new book was very well stocked this year. There's just not all that much. An occasional zine and one extra book doesn't seem to be enough or a game for this size. It gets a bullet from me. So that's Iron Kingdoms, a recommended romp through a ravaged repository of raucous rage and rumbling retribution. Are you like a crazy person? Though my peers may think me mad, history shall remember me a genius. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed for that one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tune in next time for October is the month that should not be. A lusty lad, talk like a pirate. If ye be a lusty lad, talk like a pirate. If ye be a lusty lad, talk like a pirate. Talk like a pirate. Okay. If ye be a lively lass, talk like a pirate. If ye be a lively lass, talk like a pirate. If ye be a lively lass, talk like a pirate. Talk like a pirate.